Edinburgh is one of Europe's most beautiful and picturesque cities. Draped across a series of rocky hills overlooking the sea, it's a town intimately entwined with its landscape, with buildings and monuments perched atop crags and overshadowed by cliffs. Edinburgh has two contradictory but complementary faces, paralleling the city's most infamous literary character, Jekyll and Hyde. The Fringe Festival is very much a Jekyll and Hyde experience. Um, at this time of year, the population of Edinburgh doubles because of the Fringe. Doubles. I mean, Edinburgh is hectic at the best of times, but when the Fringe comes, it's really, really crazy. The Fringe is aptly named because of its origin. In 1947, several uninvited theater groups decided to showcase their productions on the outskirts of the crowds that were attending the first international festival. In 1948, the group was given a name by fellow playwright and journalist Robert Kempt with a quote that said it all. Round the fringe of official festival drama, there seems to be more private enterprise than before. I am afraid some of us are not going to be at home during the evenings. In its earliest form, The Fringe was mostly theater and performance art. But in recent years, comedy has taken the front seat. The Fringe is a non-juried show, which means anything goes. The Fringe is known for showcasing experimental and non-mainstream theater performances. In 2009, there were 34,265 performances that took place in The Fringe, amounting to 1.8 million in ticket sales. Um, Edinburgh is an exciting time when the fringe is on. Um, it brings so many tourists here. They come from all over the world because it is the biggest arts festival in the world. So people come here from every country. Um, this is the 63rd year of the fringe, so it's very popular. My name's Kieran Sims and we're in Edinburgh on the Royal Mile Parade. I think it's like it's changed it's certainly kind of like from its origins about like it being that fringe and kind of like being that place um, to kind of like get away from the mainstream and I think like that that uh, has has kept as it's grown like it's still that place for kind of new writing for, for kind of small theatre companies for people just to give it a go and have fun. Um, and yeah, I think that's yesterday, is that people here, like, you know, they're not taking it too seriously. It, it's done for as little money as possible, and everyone just kind of come and, and you know, you, you see some real gems, and that's the thing. I think everyone who comes to the fringe is looking for that kind of piece of something that they've never seen before, uh, and, and to come away and say, like, oh my god, and when that comes up in 10 years as a professional show, they say, I saw that at the fringe, and it was great, and, you know, that sort of thing. Do you want to know what the hardest thing about being at the fringe is? Talking to strangers in yeah. the street and trying to engage them and get them to come and see a show. The best thing is when they do come and you, you get to make them laugh. And sometimes they put some money in the bucket at the end to try and pay off the colossal costs of being here. I think it gives you access to drama and to dance to comedy that you're not going to see anywhere else. Um, I think that's the main thing. Uh, people can come, um, whatever their budget, they can they can they can come up here. They can put plays on. Um, but I think it's it's getting more expensive in recent years. Talking to a lot of people, so I, I hope it, it maintains itself as something that anybody can do. Um, if it doesn't, I think it'd be a crying shame because it's so good to see so much new stuff out there, new talent, new actors, new writers, all the rest of it. Um, yeah, you'll see things I think here which you're not going to see anywhere else. I'm Dan Wessels, I'm from Baby Wants Candy, I'm the music director, piano player. What we do at Baby Wants Candy is we take a title at the beginning of the show from the audience, the first title we hear, and we make up an hour-long musical based on that title. Uh, for example, some titles we've had in the past are uh, Centaur, put that down, walk with me. And uh, we've also had uh, Hanukkah, Bloody Hanukkah, or the Department of Redundancy Department. Here, have some, have some candy from Baby Wants Candy. <laughs> the characters, the plot, the music, the choreography is all completely made up on the spot. We also have a four-piece band led by yours truly, six actors from New York and Chicago. We, this is our fifth Fringe, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. We've gotten a five-star review from the Scotsman. Oh my gosh, my pitch is long. It's a pretty incredible opportunity. I mean, like we, at, back in Chicago, it's the same in New York, like you only get to do this show like once a week. And so to be able to have like a month where you just do the, the show every day and uh, 
and doing it with the same people each time is awesome. Like that's a, an experience that you can't replicate back in the States really. Well, the other thing about the Fringe that's unique is like, I feel like every show that I, and this was from here in 2001, like any show you saw is so much fun, even if it's not a strong show or, because they're only 45 minutes, they're, it's almost over before you, uh, it began and like you just see such a potpourri of different things that you never would go to back to home in the States, so. People get to put stuff on as new, a new work to be seen, in theory, as a cheaper price. So you can try things out, you can, like, this is the first musical I've ever written. Uh, to get that on in a 160-seater theatre like I have here is very difficult because no one knows my name as a writer. Uh, the downside is that uh, it's become very commercial um, over the last 10 years and it's a lot more expensive. So it's harder for companies to do exactly what I've just said. Um, when I first started to come to the Fringe 15 years ago, it, you'd see a show for £4, £5. Now everything's a tenner. <laughs> the whole point is you should be able to see as much as possible and, and it shouldn't be too much, but the venues charge quite a bit. The accommodation is so expensive. But it's amazing, the buzz here is just incredible and you meet and mingle with everyone from the industry, from different sides there? of the industry, and you make friends and new relationships are formed and more collaboration. Good. I'm Leslie Goldman. Katie Greener and we're in Craig Crook Castle. Craig Crook! Oh, she said it correctly. We just did a concert for The Fringe produced by Richard DeMarco. Richard! Should we get him in I will here go now? get him for you. Sure. Oh no, he will not. Katie, 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 Katie. You'll edit this. Katie. The Fringe is awesome. Like, this is my third Fringe and I absolutely love it because I'm from Scotland. So, handing out flowers and flyers is great fun. Like everything's happening, it's always kicking off, it's so buzzing, like at night, Grass Market, Calgate, it's just full of people dressed up and good looking people, so it's good fun. If it's not fun, don't do it. Yeah, something fun, something entertaining, something different. If it's not fun, Where I wouldn't be doing it. It's... If I didn't like her, I wouldn't be doing it with it. When it began, there were only eight shows. And for the first 20 or 30 years, there was not very many venues a few venues mm -hmm. and you would get one venue and one performance in the venue. Mm -hmm. Now it's unthinkable. Uh, the whole thing's changed because there are now four big venues, mm -hmm. all controlled by stand-up comics. It's got thousands of shows on, um, like ranging from dance and theater, like really like hardcore theatre and then masses of comedy. I mean all the big comedians come up here, loads of different, massive range of stuff and it caters to all different types of people. It seems like a, like a million plus person summer camp. I know, and everyone just gets very busy, it's very exciting, you can't walk down the street properly because someone will try and give you a ticket for something or like a unicycle will come in your face. Um, I mean, what changes? It's just busier and there's more going on, I think. It's a little bit less chilled out, everything opens later, the prices change. We make a lot more money during summertime at the festival. Um, Sort of survive off tourists. Uh, we make twice as much, definitely double. So. I start at 11 in the morning and finish about, about half past one the following morning, Monday to Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, I'll do 11 in the morning till about half past three in the morning. I think sometimes it does get you nervous know, because you get tired and you get peopled out because it's very, very busy. But the, the, the whole bus of the city is what gives it gives it the sort of flavour of the fringe, really. Without that, it would be, it's, you know, you might not come and see very many shows, but you can soak up the atmosphere and watch the street performances down the Royal Mile and what have you, and, and feel as if you're part of it without having to spend a fortune going to see everything. We've got so many stage performers and so much like positivity, and the atmosphere is just so supportive and exuberant the whole time. An awesome experience. Edinburgh is a multifaceted city. On the one hand, it's peaceful, serene, and full of history, but when the Fringe comes to town, it turns into a wild and crazy place. Every year, the Fringe gets bigger and bigger, drawing in more and more acts for audiences to see. For five crazy weeks, audiences can have their pick of comedy, theater, dance, musicals, and opera. Only when the last of the Fringe performers close up shop does the city return to its peaceful self. That is, until the next fringe begins again. <laughs>